What's up, everybody? We're back here with the Mossmo Show, episode five, and I got a super great guest, my guy, the dude who actually got me into doing podcasts. That actually struck uh, my mind with doing these podcasts. My guy, Needham. What's up, brother? Hey, man. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, man. How about you? Yeah, do you know what? I'm good, and I'm I, I'm glad you said that about the podcast because I remember that day so vividly. <laughs> because you were one of the first people to come on my show who I didn't know. So I was yeah. I was like nervous making sure everything was good, everything was clean, like can I give him can I get him anything, <laughs> whatever. And then you came, you were you were really good. And like just to sit back and just talk about life, sport and all this stuff, like it's enjoyable, isn't it? So to still yeah. be doing it now is great, man, for real. Yeah, no, I remember that it was twenty eighteen. Um I'm coming back for my senior year in college in Utah. Um, and you hit me up. Uh, and I didn't, I don't think I've seen it. And I think it's someone inside. Yeah, don't lie. Don't <laughs> lie to the audience, man. You saw it. <laughs> you saw that. And you left it well alone. Come on, man. No. <laughs> I'm going to stick to my story. I didn't see it, right? And I think um, someone inside uh, officially hit me up and told me that you wanted to do one. And I was like, for sure, because they told me you were playing for the Real Salt Lake team and everything like that. And I was like, I was, you know, intrigued off that point from by itself. And I was like, all right, for sure, let's do it. And then, you know, we did it. And I mean, I mean, the whole setup, the whole setup you had, um, mm. just 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 chilling, kicking back, like your show is called Kick Back, We Need Them, just yeah, coming man. out, hanging out. Um, I think the thing that intrigued me about your show the most of uh, just doing podcasts was just being able to talk so freely. Um, mm. In college, you don't really have the opportunity to do that a lot. Because um, if you do like a like an interview or some type of thing with the media, um, you usually have to say everything politically correct because everything kind of just kicks back on the school and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, when I did yours, I was like, man, I actually, <laughs> I'm like, I do this every other day with, with dudes in the locker room. Like we argue, yeah, we, we talk about sports, we talk about life and things like that. And I'm like, when I heard that podcasting was a thing, cause I didn't know it was a thing. Like I'd never had kind of just, you know, either listen to one, um, you know, I heard about like Ted talks and things like that. And I never yeah. even like watched anything on YouTube. And I was like, Oh, so this is like a thing thing. Like people mm. <laughs> like really mm. do this. Yeah, and I was like, sure, man ever since that day like you said like it's definitely in the back of my brain like i've listened to that pod um recently like when i when i started my show i went back and listened to you know our episode on your on your pod and just kind of tried to get some type of you know some learning from it um yeah you know kind of how right. to do the whole thing and things like that do you know for me with podcasts everybody listens for lots of different reasons yeah but with my show it's not about mm -hmm. me, it's about the guest, because the guest is allowed to come on and be himself. Because I'm not gonna ask them, Oh, how do you feel about playing against Arizona State this weekend? <laughs> how did you feel about playing against Oregon last weekend? Like that stuff is yeah. important to to other people. This is about you. So you can't get the answers wrong. You know, you're talking about <laughs> yeah. yourself. So when you when people get going, you know, that's when you find the best in them. Because I think usually you probably see this yourself now, like when you get media commitments. The mm -hmm. question you always ask is like, how long is this going to be for? Yeah. But with the show, exactly. But with the show, you end up talking for far, far longer than you'd give to anybody else because you're talking about something which you're passionate about. And then the clock doesn't matter. And that's yeah. when you get the best stories. And that's why I've, I've loved doing it, man. Two years, I've absolutely loved it. Yeah, no, definitely. Like you said, like, you'd be like, man, how long am I going to do this? For? I just did one today. <laughs> that's why it's funny you said that. Like, I literally just did one. I was like, it was right after practice. I was like, how long is this going to be? Uh, exactly. five, 10 minutes i'm like all right cool i can do it anything longer exactly. than that eh, i don't know exactly. but like, you said, like when like that's when i wanted to that's what i got from your show and our pod that we did our episode was just allowing guys to come on and just talk about whatever they want to talk about like when i started talking about doing my pod um to the guys on our team they were like you know can we come on? Can we say whatever we want? I'm like, yeah, you can say whatever you want. Like, I'm not finna be asking you, like you said, like, I'm not finna be asking you, oh, what did you think about this game and that game and things like that? I'm just trying to really give you opportunity to, to go on the platform, mm. you know, express yourself, allow, you know, myself and others 
to know you because obviously you're you're a professional athlete so you already know when you do a media thing even if it's a kind of about your background you don't really give them a hundred percent everything no, no. about your background no, and never. the coolest thing is when you're when it's athlete the athlete you know it's kind of like we just know each other so much so it's like you just feel so much comfortable just mm -hmm. saying whatever um, yeah, just man. being you and that's what i wanted to you, always tailor my show after right. it's especially so for our two worlds for me playing soccer like soccer outside of the usa is like the biggest thing it's the biggest thing mm -hmm. in the world but for you being in the usa playing football like i've been over there i've seen the coverage anything like we could say something today about a game on sunday and that's going to be discussed on first take undisputed this yeah. espn everything the works but you didn't say it for that to be the for that to be the thing that happened you know yeah. so when people are like alongside me on the show like they know that i'm not out to get them you can literally <laughs> say whatever you want but it's like you're talking about you if you want to disrespect someone disrespect someone if you don't don't i'm asking like what makes you who you are that's yeah. what people really have to think about it because you know throughout their life they probably never had to think about like well why did i do that and then you sort of put it all together you paint a yeah. picture of yourself and it's like yo I'll tell you what that this was good because usually when you see the microphones it's like yeah so you know we did well for the game <laughs> plan we did this this blase blase blah we'll get ready for the next game we'll respect yeah. this team like those are answers but you know what's what's the value in those because it's, it's you know it's easy you could someone else could write those answers for you but yeah. nobody can write the answers for yourself can they yeah we we want the core stuff we want the stuff that makes you you mm -hmm. that makes you that tell us about how, why mm. you got mm. to this point in your life. Um, you know, the people who helped you, the people who didn't help you, you know, whatever it may be, like these are the things that, you know, people want to know that, you know, that you won't be able to get anywhere else. Like I did the, my first episode was with Josh Allen, our quarterback. Yes, it was, yeah. Yeah, man. And like the things that I learned, just like the weird, funny things that I learned about him, uh, Cause I remember the first time, like the one thing that pops out to me is him throwing up every game. Like he literally makes mm. himself throw up every game. And the first time that I ever really like kind of just really paid attention to it and caught it was my rookie, obviously my last year, my rookie year. Um, and we were playing the Patriots in New England and everyone knows it's a hostile environment. I mean, they didn't, I don't think they have fans. If they did, it wasn't a lot. Um, but like the referees, like mm. the coaches all week was like, bro, this is like, you got to be on point because the referees are like, you think they play for the Patriots. <laughs> Essentially, that's what they were trying <laughs> to tell us because how Brady and Belichick had it there for 20 years, like it was so hard to get calls to do this. Like, you know, the whole deflate gate when they were playing with a uh, deflated football and, you know, the whole nine yards and everything like that. And like the coaches were like super serious about it. And I'm like, man, this is crazy. Um, cause I'm actually in it for one, you know, going over to new England, always kind of mm. seeing it on TV and, you know, it, Brady wasn't there of course, but still at the end of the day, like that history you felt, um, in that stadium and I'm watching Josh throw up right before the game. I'm like, damn, is he nervous? <laughs> like <laughs> I haven't paid attention to it or seen him do this, um, any game. Right. And this is the back end of the year. Like this is in December. This is late December. And I'm like, is he nervous? Like, there's no way he's nervous about this game. He ain't been nervous about not other, any other game we've played this year. And I think the only reason I seen him do it is because my locker, um, the way the guest locker room was set up, that it was kind of like turned right to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So I'm like hearing somebody just go like, oh, like hockey. And I'm like, bro, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, <laughs> that don't sound like it, like, it, like it's going to smell good for one. Mm, and nice. I'm watching, I'm like, oh shit. And then he told me when he came on the pod, like that's something that he's been doing for a very long time. And I was like, bro, what? Like I thought he was nervous and just learning that. And I think that's one of the coolest things that I wanted to do in the pod was just like kind of just learn things from people, learn like just little cool little things that, about people that you wouldn't know. Like I never would have known that because I never would have asked him, why does he do that? Yeah. Why are you, in my head, I'd be like, why are you doing that? Are you do you have any sort of like superstitions like that? Me, I don't. 
I don't. I think maybe something I don't maybe that I, something I do that I don't think is superstitious a lot is that I try not to listen to uh like rap music on game day. Like on Sunday, I'll wake up and I'll uh, turn on gospel. Like if we're uh, at, okay. yeah, like if we're at an away game, I'll turn on my headphones. And if if we're at home, we stay at this hotel. Um, so I'll turn it on in the car when I'm driving home. Uh, Cause I wake up every morning at six in the morning at, on home games, and I come back home, um, and I get ready from there. So I'll turn it on then. Um, so that's like the only thing that I really, really do. Um, besides that, I don't really think nothing is like crazy that I do. Is that because it's Sunday? So what happens when you play on a Thursday or you play on a Monday? Is it the same I, thing? No, I've, I've always done this. I've always done this since like college. Okay. Yeah. Like maybe my sophomore year, if I can, because I can't really remember like doing it my freshman year because I wasn't playing much. Um, but I would assume that I was definitely doing it my sophomore year, and that's kind of when it started. Because in high school, I know I didn't do it. Um, so I think uh, college is definitely when it started, and it just kind of just always, you know, when you find something mm. and mm. like say you have a good game, you're like, oh yeah, mm. I'm gonna bad that into this. Yeah, oh, <laughs> Every week. I did. I didn't know you Like these superstitions. <laughs> Like people, not every nobody's won every single game, but still, yeah. you know, you still want to do the same thing because it makes you feel good. But that's yeah. the psychology, isn't it? If somebody feels good on the field, then let it be. Because say for me, my last last sort of few years as mm. the sort of senior player in my team, I was so chill. Like yeah. there are people around me who are panicking. They've got to raise their right sock before their left sock. <laughs> they put the shirt on the jersey on this way or that way. And that picture there, that's me in a nutshell. I'd just be sitting in the corner. Just like talking to people, <laughs> saying, oh, yeah, yeah, man, so how about this? How about that? And then when it's time to go out and play, you know, I go out and play. Yeah. But, like, I remember I used to think certain things I had to do to play well. And then, say there was a time, we, so we had two games in three days, and we got told, if you play in the first game, you won't play in the second game. So I played in the first game, and then I just cut loose. I was eating the worst. I was going to bed late, everything. I thought, I'm, you know, I've completed the game, I'm done. And then on the day of the second game, the coach said, oh, you're playing this game. And I was like, oh, my God, I can't play. I'm so underprepared. Yeah. I played better in the second game than I did the first game. Like, so I said, all right, cool, better then. So from this point, like, what really matters? And by the way, it's a nice goal you got here. I'm happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice, man. Thank you. You're making me feel good. You're making me feel good, man. This is good. This is good. How, what what how what age did you kind of develop? Like what age was that? Like was that like you kind of young or no? Nah, like... That's 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 mid me. That's like I think I was twenty eight. So mm -hmm. I started professionally when I was seventeen, and I actually retired last year at the age of thirty four. So I was I was so in the game for a little while. Yeah. Seventeen years, yeah, man. Wow, I didn't years. know you played since you were seventeen. That's crazy. Yeah. It's a, well, that's the thing. It's different. It's different in England or just just in soccer in general. Like if yeah. you if you're good enough, you're old enough. Whereas with you guys, like you know, we spoke about it on my show. Like, but the whole college system, the way things work, the fact you have yeah. to go through this and you must do this and you must do that, like it kind of blows my mind a little bit. But that's the beauty of the sport because it's been like that for a long yeah. time, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely been like that since the start of the sport. Um, mm. It's kind of weird to kind of imagine 17 year old kids playing football with older yeah. guys I, c I couldn't see it <laughs> i couldn't see it yeah well yeah if you if you're talking football it's different because like yeah, in your sport, yeah football yeah there's like there's like true true physicality at its core you can have yeah. the x's and the o's but if you don't have the physicality you're not gonna you're not really gonna do anything are you so yeah, whereas with uh, our sport, there is contact, but it's not the same sort of contact as like somebody trying to just destroy your soul with a tackle or getting pancaked by a guy that's like 300 pounds. Like, it's definitely not that. So, yeah, yeah, you, we can kind of get away with it in our game, yeah. Yeah, you definitely can get away with it in yours. Yeah. Um, but, you know, switching switching topics, um, kind of want to talk about your background, kind of, mm. you know, where you were born, um, you know, and kind of your upbringing and everything like that, kind of to who you are today and things like that. Obviously, I know you were born in uh, Wari, Nigeria. Um, mm -hmm. Tell us, tell us, tell us about that. So, 
I'm a guy who has two identities. So like I said, like you said, that I was born in Nigeria, but I came over to the UK when I was five years old. I think. And I'll be honest, in those first probably three years or so, I was very much a Nigerian living in England. I wasn't really part of that whole culture. But one thing like about, say, myself and my family, you know, we stayed true to who we were. And being raised in England in the early 90s wasn't necessarily like, the best thing in the world as a as a black foreigner basically but you know nigeria is always nigeria is always going to be home people like me this is this is where they're from but i was raised in manchester i sound like i do because i was raised in in the in the uk in manchester specifically so i didn't i joined manchester city's academy when i was 10 years old but interestingly i didn't even have a full british like citizenship until i was 15 16 so when we used to go on tour to say your countries in Europe and so on, everybody would be coming back. And even though I sound like this and I'm from the city, they're in the line for British passports and I'm in the line that's 10, 10 flipping times longer with all the <laughs> foreign passports and stuff like this. But in the end, you know, I made the adjustment. And like I say, I was lucky to have had potentially the chance to play for Nigeria and I played for England youth as well. And it was mm. it was interesting because say from the to play for England youth meant that the people in Nigeria felt like I'd betrayed them, but then the people in Nigeria never called me up really to give myself the opportunity to play for them. So it was yeah. um, it was it was interesting. But you know, I've got to hold my hands up. If England play Nigeria, I always want Nigeria to win. But that's probably the only time that I want England to lose a game. So I'm gonna hold my hands up and say that's who I am. And my name isn't Nathan, it's Nathan. So like, you know, that's that's my that's that's who I am. I'm never gonna escape that because I don't want to. Nah, I love that. I love that. Um so growing up in Manchester, mm. um I'm sure that was two different things from obviously being in Nigeria and then coming to Manchester. Yeah, for sure. Like the first two places that we lived in, we were basically the only black people literally the only ones and people made sure that we knew that mm. but you know i was trying to we were trying to fit not uncommon we, yeah exactly <laughs> we were trying to fit and do what we do like yeah. even in my in my high school um look at this picture man that's a classic but like even in my um in my high school I remember in the whole school there was myself and one other guy the only yeah. the only black kids and we both happened to be in the same class like that's just that's the way well not unfortunately that's the way i was raised so i had the culture which came from extended family but in terms of day-to-day -day stuff it was very different but manchester's mm -hmm. changed a lot over the years it's a very diverse city it's like it's it's a great place to to live really i'm enjoying it made some of my best friends and closest friends here but yeah being being black in the 90s obviously was bad and it's obviously been worse in other decades yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> it was obviously a lot worse but yeah things are better now they're better now and yeah. yeah you have to go through some stuff to be able to get here for sure i need to get over there and check it out one that's, day that's facts man but like would you ever be involved in that um london series game or not um the bills has as, as they actually played in that game before i just don't know kind of how many years ago it was mm. and then like if you have like you know, if the league has some type of schedule already in their head, like, okay, if you guys play here in 17, we'll mm. wait till 23 or something like that to now bring you guys out. But I don't know, like, the Jaguars play over there all the yeah. time. Yeah, um, that's right, and, yeah. And I believe the Dolphins played over there. I think they played the Jaguars. Over yeah, there. Oh. and that's, yeah. that's the funny thing as well, because so since I've been in, since I went to America, like, I fully bought into American sports culture. So I get a feel for what's hot, what's not, and so on. Yeah. And I don't think the USA really blessed London by giving us the the bills. <laughs> uh, sorry, giving us sorry, giving us the uh, the Jacks, the Jacks, and the Dolphins right now. That's that's yeah. not really a blessing. But in time, who knows? Who knows? Maybe things yeah. will get better. I would think it would be kind of smart to kind of market your best teams. You know what I mean? Kind of to market them over there to push the best. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, we're all really good athletes, so it's not you know. Yeah. But to That's push like the, the teams that are having a lot of success, like I think if you bring, say, you have a Lamar Jackson versus Patrick Mahomes game in London, you know what I mean? Like those are two mm. of the biggest stars in our game. Um, who knows what it does instead of bringing, you know, two teams that are like, you know, combined maybe three wins all season. I don't know. I'm sure we'll get. 
I'm sure they get better, but then also, like, one thing which I'm yeah. seeing from the outsides with the NFL, like, even if, like, I think it was last week when you guys, did you lose to the, to Jacksonville? Was it six? Yeah, we lost to, we lost to Jacksonville two weeks ago, yeah. Yeah, like, six to nine. that's, that's the thing that I've picked up the most from, say, investing in to understanding American sports. Even though one team feels like it's the favorite, when it's in the pros, everybody's good. Yeah. So it's likely going to go this way, but it's never guaranteed it's going to go that way. Never. Yeah. And yeah. like, so like, it's, you just never know, man. Like maybe, maybe the Jags will be good next year. Maybe, who knows? Because the margins can be so small sometimes, can't they? Yeah. Yeah. It, no, it's it's true. Like, obviously in our back of our heads, we're like, yeah, we're going to beat the Jaguars. We're going to go down mm. to Florida, get some good weather, get out of Buffalo for a couple of days. Mm. Uh, getting some good weather, go down there, be up on them, work on our things that we need to work on, and then go home. And mm. the game did not go like that. And like no. you said, it's such a small margin of victory in our game mm. because we're all professionals. All these guys get paid millions of dollars to do a certain job, right? And mm. each and every Sunday, those guys are going to go out there and do that. Do that. And it's a, it's a like what I've learned is you know our coaches teach us it's a week to week league, right? Mm. And it's a narrative every week. It's a different narrative every week. Um, like the week that we lost to the Jaguars, um, going into that game actually, we were supposedly, you know, the hottest thing. You know, we beat the you, Chiefs. Yeah. We, yeah, we we yeah. lost by one point to the Titans. Um, mm. You know, we were this and we were that. We we're going to Super Bowl. Is going to walk through these next couple games, whatever. Then we drop a game to the Jaguars, and all hell breaks loose. All oh, the Bills mm. are done, overrated, mm. this and mm. that. And then the Titans are winning still without Derrick Henry and mm. all these type of things. And it's like it's so easy for you to get caught up. You know, I feel like as coaches, as as players, definitely because you know you see it. No matter, I, I hate when players say, "Oh, I didn't, I don't." look into the media maybe you don't look into the media but you will mm. see yeah. what happens you, you know what's people, what yeah people yeah. tag you so you have yeah. no 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 reason but not to see it at the end of the day and mm -hmm. you know it's crazy because like you know now i got my friends making fun of me because we lost to the jaguars <laughs> <laughs> yeah for sure. so like if I try to make a joke about one of my friends who's his team is the Steelers and they tied with the Detroit Lions, who yeah. are without a doubt, I think everyone would agree the worst team in the NFL. Uh, yeah. because at the time they were like 0 and 8 or 0 and 9 when they mm -hmm. played the Steelers, and then they tied the Steelers. Mm -hmm. And I can't even really make a joke hundred percent of that because at the end of the day, we lost to the Jaguars, and I know that punchline is coming right back as soon yeah, as I yeah, say it, like, it's yeah. gonna come right back. And yeah. I'm like, it's 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 kind of pointless. <laughs> <laughs> but do you do you enjoy like do you enjoy that bit of it because say when i feel like when you're in college you can talk mm. about the pros and it like it's just water off the ducks back it's, it's like doesn't really matter but now like you're in it so if you joke about that league like if that's that's you like this is like objectively you can say detroit the worst team so far this year because they've not won a game yeah, but then they might win the next game. They might win the game after and stuff like this. So they might be talking about, oh, such and such said this about us, and such and such said this about us. And it's like, at the end of the day, like in some ways, I, f I feel it's like, um, it's a bit like say combat sports, like fighting, UFC, boxing, or whatever. Yeah. Like even when you're nice, you're still always one shot away from everything changing. Every everybody has a fighter's chance. Yeah, exactly. You like I said, you're, you're you're one you're one punch away. You, anybody like Tyson got knocked out, and usually mm -hmm. he's the dude that's gonna knock somebody out, right? Mm -hmm. So exactly. anybody can lose on any given day, on any given Sunday, or any day of the week. Like mm -hmm. so, it's yeah, it, it it's fun though um, to be in this league. Um, I think just from the part of you always you work so hard to get here, right? Mm -hmm. And I always tell people. Um, you know, playing in the NFL was was it was a dream, but it wasn't like something that I just like outrightly worked super day in and day out to get. Right. And people are always kind of surprised by that because 
you know, we're the best athletes, you know, we always have the, you know, the top notch work ethics and things like that. And, you know, I definitely have those traits, but it wasn't like my life is over mm. <laughs> if I don't mm. make it to the league. Cause you know, I didn't even think I was good t- to play college football um, until maybe my sophomore year in college. That's when I kind of was like, okay, maybe I can make it. Mm. Um, and the, my junior year, that was the year where I was like, okay, I can definitely play in the NFL. And I think as an athlete, you kind of just go through those stages of proving things to yourself. Um, mm-hmm. But it, it's definitely really fun playing in this league because I get a, the chance to play with some of the best athletes in the world, um, learn from so many great coaches. Like we have a mm-hmm. lot of coaches on our coaching staff who has either won Super Bowls, coached in Super Bowls, um, have been on the teams with Tom Brady, uh, mm-hmm. winning Super Bowls and things like that. And I'm like, it's crazy because as a kid and um, growing up and things like that, like I said, like I will always joke with my friends about, oh man, I got this team winning and this and this and this. And then being in now in the league and being so close to people who actually have been in those games, <laughs> right? Like I remember watching the 2015 Super Bowl um the Broncos versus the uh, Panthers and now we have guys on our team that e- there was that won the Super Bowl for the Broncos mm. and I even played with the Carolina Panthers and then I get a chance to play against Cam Newton and kind of see him in person twice last year right mm. you get to see uh, uh Aaron Rodgers um haven't played Brady yet but we play him um in a couple weeks so like things like that like those are the things that like I think I'll cherish the most when I, mm. you know, whenever I'm done playing, it's just like just being able to be in those moments. You know, mm. I'm I'm a big moment person, and I try yeah. to be in the moment and cherish that that moment. Like, you know, my girl hates that. Like, I'll buy something, no matter if it's like, you know, expensive or not. But I'll buy something if it gives me a moment or a memory that I'll, mm. you know, that I'll always remember. And that's kind of just how I am. Um, I don't know why, but like, I definitely love it though. You know, this is this is so cool. Like, I know this is your show, and I keep asking you questions. But nah, you're good. <laughs> like, it's like low key, you're geeking out about the situation that you're in. But the situation mm-hmm. you're in is one which you deserve because you've earned the right to be there. So the way, yeah. same way you look at, say, you're talking about Tom Brady, talking about this, but you're talking about it the same way. Like, I'll be talking about them, or like, say, somebody on like part of my take or first take or whatever will talk about these guys. But you're like in there, what you're doing is what everybody would love to do. Like that's, 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 that, and that was the same thing for me. Like soccer is such a big game yeah. in the world that even in the lowest point, like now, cause every time like I play, I just jog around, play some amateur soccer and stuff like this. And I see people who are desperate to be where I was yeah. and I'm playing with them. I'm like, these guys are dead. Like they're nowhere <laughs> near it, <laughs> but, but like, it's amazing because it makes me realize and appreciate like how far away from like the the say I think the saying goes like this. So say I'm a long way away from Messi, but the man on the street is even further away from me. So when somebody wants to could talk about me and, and all this, like just know to even get to where I am, this is different, man. It's a long, long way. So to be playing in the stadiums I played in, to played in the countries I played in with the people I played with. Like I lived it and you're living it, and that's that's cool, man. I'm supporting you. I'm part. I feel like I'm part of like Bills Mafia now as well. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the dude that was supporting. We got to support you. We got to get like, some Bills play. gear. We got to get yeah, some man. Bills gear. Listen, listen, my my cousin, shout out to you, D. Like he, um, I got him your jersey last year, and he was because yeah. I said, oh, yeah, you know, it's like, and this is how crazy it is how much things change. When you come into the studio, me as a professional, 15 years, mm-hmm. was like, yo, there's this college footballer, man. He's coming, like. This is serious, you know. This is a big guy, you know. This is a big, big <laughs> point. I was like, I was a bit nervous and all this stuff, but then the reality of the situation is, like, you weren't a professional, but you were still a huge deal to me, to my friends group and stuff like that. Shout out to Ryan as well, the producer. Like, you were that, you were that dude in Utah. You were that dude. Like, there's no denying it. You can try and downplay and stuff, but like, <laughs> you, you, you were that dude, man. Like, there were a few others who were doing well, obviously, on the other side of things, but. Yeah, you were that dude, man. So to be able to record with you and still be calling my friend today, man. As I see you playing in the NFL, it's like I'm having a body experience. I'm like, yo, this, yo, yo, that's 
That's just emo. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's that, man. Yeah, it's it's crazy. It's is time has flown low key. Yeah, mm. uh, from 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 that time. Uh, mm. From I think from recovering from a knee injury, which I was mm. recovering from at the time. Um, and then now being in this whole situation, being in the NFL and, you know, all that type of stuff, like you said, like, it's kind of crazy to myself because sometimes, like, I'll go on, like, Facebook or, you know, Snapchat where they have, like, those mm. little memories and things like that. Mm. And I'll look at a picture. I'm like, oh, my goodness. I remember <laughs> when mm -hmm. I posted this. And it's like, like, I'm 23, but I'm like, damn, I'm kind of getting older because life is <laughs> is moving a little yeah. bit on you yeah. because like you know how this is actually like you get so caught up in what you're doing sometimes that you forget that you're kind of living life and i think like yeah. from i know in college i definitely did that um because i was trying to get to a certain place right mm -hmm. like i was trying so hard to get to the lead take care of my family and do things like that and i was like now when i look back on college and i kind of see like videos or something or picture from cause i'm like damn i wish i would have enjoyed <laughs> mm. you know being in those moments i think that's probably why i'm like this it's like i wish i would have enjoyed being in those moments being with those people just a little bit more because you know some of the people you probably would never kind of see again you maybe you won't ever really speak to again you know and all those type of things like that and i'm like damn i wish i would have enjoyed those times because like you can't get it back like yeah, you just can't sure. get those times back and i'm like damn i wish i would have enjoyed those moments and now like now i'm like i enjoy everything like i really try to enjoy as much as i possibly can because i know this game isn't you know forever um mm -hmm. and i've never been a person that's you know like attached myself to the sport i play like i've always tried to be myself no mm -hmm. matter what because mm -hmm. i know like like you see all the time like people who attach themselves to the sport that they play so much, sometimes they have a super hard time, you know, detaching when that sport detaches from them and then mm -hmm. they can't find themselves. And like, you know, I've seen those stories so many times and I'm like, I can't be that person, right? Like, yeah. I gotta yeah. always be me just because I'm doing this thing. And that's why I love like kind of what LeBron's doing with the, you know, more than athlete thing. Um, and, you know, some other guys and stuff like that. And I'm like, just saying that people don't really understand if you're not an athlete 100 mm. because like you see it people always tell you tell us to uh focus on what you, you need to focus on right like play your sport stay in your lane right like you sometimes where they kind of dehumanize you a little bit as if you can't speak on so social things mm -hmm. that's going on in the same world that we all live in the same world that are actually going on like if it's as if Oh, just because I play football, I don't have an opinion or I shouldn't have an opinion about this, this and this. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's so crazy to see people actually talk to people, you know, and respond to people in that way. Because, like, you remember when LeBron, they told him to shut up and dribble. Right. Yeah, like, Lord, yeah. I remember to, that. To, to think to think. I don't know. I think I'm a person with common sense. <laughs> <laughs> right and i don't think that's what ever popped in my my mind to tell someone to shut up and dribble like shut up don't talk about this because you're a basketball player you don't yeah stupid yeah. have any thing to do with this as if we don't yeah. live in the same world right yeah and it's so dumb say bro it's, it's it's so dumb like some of the i love living in the usa but in when i was there in 2020 some of the stuff that i was seeing and hearing was as dumb as I've ever seen from some people. Like, it blew my mind. And, like, with that LeBron thing, like, pe people say LeBron's polarizing, whatever. But when LeBron James was born, he was not born a professional basketball player. Like, he lived a life. And even as he's playing now, he's still living his life. And after he retires, he will exactly. continue to live a life. He's living in the same place that you are. So why can't you have a voice when people, as you said there, some people, we want to just solely tie their identity to the sport that they do or the job that yeah. they have. Like the jobs that, the job that you have and the job that I had, like a career could last a game. It could last for 20 years, like Tom Brady. You just never Very know. True. But then even still with Tom Brady, at some point he's going to stop. 
And then, and then what? Are you expecting to see him walking down the street with his pads on, like throwing balls to people across the road? Like that's not going to be a thing. <laughs> like the reality is, the game will continue even after the people that have made it for you have give, have stopped playing. So yeah. you being yourself is key. And I think for some people who don't have that identity, like when that moment comes, like they have nothing. Like some people get to their worst, but then again, lo and behold, how much easier is the work that you do? when your life away from the field is great. If you were right to work with a smile on your face and you're stress-free, you can go out there and you can enjoy yourself, express yourself and be able to yeah. focus in on that thing. When you've got extra weight on your shoulders from other things which are going on, like the game is a lot harder. For some, they could call it a release, but the fact is they're still not 100% there because there's other things that exist in their mind and they almost fear leaving the leaving their workplace. So yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's like, like sport, sports are crazy, crazy thing. And you know, I, like I did it for many years. You're doing it now, professionally. And you, we'll touch wood. You'll be doing it for many, many years to come. Plenty of Super Bowls, everything, like championships, everything. But the fact is, like the fact you have an identity away from the field as well. Some people who yeah. don't know will be like, ah, oh, you're not focused enough. But trust me, like if they were in your shoes, they'd be doing exactly what you're doing because that's probably the exactly. best way to do it. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm like last year, like you said in 2020. Um, you know, with the whole COVID thing going on and then all this social injustice stuff going on. It's like, it was just so much stuff. And I try not to um, attach myself to mm -hmm. too much of it because, I mean, like today, the Kyle Rittenhouse uh, mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. right? Like common sense, you would say, okay, this dude has to go to jail, yeah. right? No matter color no matter you know whatever they want to figure out or say why he did what he did right mm -hmm. at the end of the day you killed two people right and you would assume that this dude would go to jail and i remember like today literally after practice we got out of practice like one o'clock um and we have like a few tvs inside our locker room and you know one of them is always on like this, this news channel kind of thing with like mm. stocks and all that type of stuff and you know no one ever paid attention to that tv like you just usually walk by it like sometimes you won't even know it's there and today they it had the kyle rittenhouse um trial up there and the whole verdict and everything like that and when they said he was not guilty on all counts everyone lost it like mm. everyone lost it was like bro how in the world you know what i mean like like mm. it, it gets to the point where like i think this was like the first time that I just like felt that there almost isn't really a lot of hope. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Like, cause it's been going on for so long. Right. And there's mm -hmm. so many different ways that, you know, you know, minorities, people of color, um, you know, and not just African-Americans, Hispanics, you know, the whole mm -hmm. nine yards um, that they, that we go through. And I'm like, I think today was like the first time, like, bro, this is like, there's almost like no hope, right? Like this, like, and I'm like, how are people like, I'm just like, in a sense, I was like, bro, so many guys on our team are so shocked right now. So a sense where I'm like, you can almost feel like this is becoming normal mm. in a mm. sense, right? Cause I remember last year, 2020, you know, and this is the first time me being in the league. And like I said, like we talked about in college, when you're in college, you represent the university, right? Like your last name is not there, mm -hmm. right? And they made that 100% clear to you. That's why you couldn't make any money off your off your name, off your likeness, whatever. Like they made that 100% clear. You're just an object here to do whatever you like to entertain, but this is, you're not making any money, right? And your opinion, voicing things, that doesn't happen in college. Mm. Like you've never heard a college player just come out and saying this and that, and you know, it just makes the university look bad. And then you have all these people coming out of the woodworks talking bad about players, uh, you know, and everything like that. And last year being in the league and it's so much more, you know, I am my own person in this league. Like we're a mm -hmm. team, but mm -hmm. I am my own person. Like I represent me. 
mm-hmm. right? Like, and my voice can be heard and will be heard in a sense. And we had so many conversations with, you know, after Kaepernick did the whole kneeling thing. Mm -hmm. Um, And I remember watching it on TV um, and things like that. And I'm like, oh shit, like this is crazy. Like I wonder how the players are dealing with this. You know what I mean? Cause it looks Mm -hmm. so crazy when you're not in it. Like you're like, okay, this dude is kneeling. Then you got all these guys over here standing up. Right. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, when you first see it, like say you're outside looking in, when you first see it, you're not thinking, oh, well, maybe some of these dudes actually have parents or family members mm-hmm. that actually served, you know what I mean? And mm-hmm. things like that. And when I got in last year and we still had this conversation about, okay, who's kneeling, who's not kneeling, right? Mm-hmm. And it's crazy because we were the only team last year that didn't come out for the national anthem. Like we didn't come out, right? And I've never been the person to, you know, I'm not like, oh my God, I wear America across my chest. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, I'm just not that person, right? It doesn't matter if I was from a different country or not. I'm just not like super patriotic, Mm -hmm. right? That's just not me. Um, And like last year, it was like, okay, this is crazy because we would have so many conversations about this and that and then hearing different people speak about different things and kind of just learning about how many different people are in this room and it's crazy because we all come from different parts of this world and Mm -hmm. we all grow up believing seeing thinking learning different things than than each and every one of us the only thing that is bringing us together is this 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 sport called football Mm -hmm. and i'm like if people understand right like how we come together and we play this sport and we call ourselves brothers and teammates, you know what I mean? Like you would think that other people would have, like, we all respected each other's opinion, right? Mm-hmm. But there's so many people in this world that just do not respect no. others' opinions, mm-hmm. right? About how they either see life, how they, you know, go about their lives or whatever it may be. And it's, it's just crazy for me because it's just like, like I said, common sense, you would think everybody would say being racist or racism is a negative thing Mm. right like that's what you would just assume just from being any you would think somebody with a good mind a good heart would be like yeah this is not right like you shouldn't be able to do this do that and get away with it for so many years and then just be so blatant to so many Mm. people to show that you don't care Mm -hmm. and that's from you know, like you spoke a lot about, you know, po- police brutality. Um, mm-hmm. And then you go, you climb up the ranks from judges um, to, you know, officials and things like that. And it's just like this world we live in, it's, it's yes, it's changed from, you know, from slavery to um, civil rights movements and to now, but it's only changed in the way that is happening. It's not that it's stopped. It's just changed that the way that is happening and the way that is being put on us now. Mm, yeah, I, t- I totally agree. Like, there's so much to let impact from what you said. But as is the case with sort of like the Rittenhouse verdict, there, some of the issues I think that exist within the world, in my opinion anyway, I like to do with the yeah. systems that are already in play. But the systems, if they're, we can look at them, we can, we can say that they're broken. But maybe they're just broken for us and for mm. us forming a minority you don't have enough people to, be able to go forward and say well we need to change it like when there were protests and stuff last year when i'm talking about the peaceful protest from last year the only reason in my opinion that it was legitimized was the fact that it wasn't just black people on the streets who were protesting it's the fact that were black people white people people from all different types of races men women right. everything and as a consequence it had to get covered if that was just black people last year the coverage in my opinion would have been very different and it would have gone yeah. far quicker but instead it was different because that almost felt like we were forming the majority for the first time probably in our lives that we were able to have greater conversations about say things we'd experienced in our past and things which we would like to see going forward and things which might be about now because for the longest yeah. time like you could have 10 people in a room and if one person says something's offensive and the other nine disagree well we just move on that's just what it is you know but all of a sudden like 
were in a different sort of spot. And it's a shame, like with the Rittenhouse thing, like to see somebody shoot somebody and to shoot somebody else, essentially, to kill two people who essentially were unarmed in terms of actual like guns and so on, and then to be said to be not guilty, like it just raises the question about you. Obviously, people have their rights, but how about responsibilities? Like, why are you? I don't know, man. It's it's weird. Like, if you're supposed to have a gun, you're not supposed to have a gun to sort of protect something. Yeah. But some people bring guns to antagonize and to offer threat to groups of people who they disagree with. Like, that's not you adhering to your responsibility. That's just you making the most of your right. You've got a right to free speech, but why should you then produce hate speech? Why should you be divisive all the time? You know, like, that's not, you're not using your responsibilities in a proper manner. And all this type of stuff is, it's interesting, and you'll only ever hear only a certain amount of people want to hear it. Other people say yeah. they're being preached to, but unfortunately, like until more people join in and saying something needs to be changed, nothing will be changed because you'll yeah. never be able to have enough people step forward and either vote or say whatever to say, "Well, this has to change," because it doesn't need to change for some. Because for them, like their world's been fine. So they're going to fight yeah. to keep it exactly the same. Oh, it's cute that, you know, you feel upset by me saying you're this, but at the end of the day, like, I don't care. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy. Um, like the older I get, older I get, it's like, it's now, um, for some reason, just so much more aware of it because now you're like almost at this age where you're like, you want to bring kids into this world. You know, you think about a family and, like when you're younger, like I remember like when my grandparents were alive and, you know, they went through this world uh, back in the 30s, the 40s, you know, and those, like I said, like just moments and memories. I'm like, man, I wish when they were alive, I were able to ask them, you know, mm. kind of how it was. How did you get through this? Right. Because, you know, the, my grandpa and my grandma, they passed away uh, five years ago. So, you know, they lived a very, a very long time. And to see so many different things happen in this world, right, to see, you know, one, Obama become president, right, um, to see, you know, so many different people come through that line of presidency, to see the world change so many different ways from, you know, from women rights um, to, you know, for us uh african americans and things like that and i'm like man i wish i was able to ask them because it's like the only thing that's changed that people are now one reason people i think are able to start seeing it more is because we live in a social media age right like people haven't just started getting killed by police you know or shot in the car by police it's just now being able to be caught on camera that's the only difference Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm like, I wish I was able to ask them questions about the time periods that they lived in, because obviously things back then were way more ruthless. You know, you had the Jim Crow laws. Right. And, you know, they were from mm -hmm. the Bahamas um, and they came over to Miami, lived in Detroit. And, you know, those times everywhere, it doesn't matter kind of where you was. I think, you know, it was tough for all all minorities at the end of the day. And I'm like, man, I wish I was able to ask them and just kind of just learn more about, you know, our story, you know, and, and just get more of a better understanding and things like that. Do you think we'll see a black president again in our lifetimes? I think we will, right? I think we will just because it's been done now so parents african american parents you know hispanic parents you know minority parents they can teach their kids hey this can be done right in a time where it never happened before ever not one time before and he beat out some pretty decent people <laughs> this can be done and i think our world is going to be so much different than what it was in mm -hmm. 08 and then him getting reelected in 12 like it's going to be so much different like we like let's be honest we accepted trump as president right <laughs> like mm. kind of almost anything like can happen like people 
we're actually voting for Kanye West. Like, are we moving into a point in our world where celebrities are actually, you know, celebrities have these huge platforms. And that's kind of what Trump was. You know, that's a platform. If you have the money, you can use that platform. You can run with it. And you can just kind of buy people in a sense. And mm. maybe that's the only reason I say, yeah, it's because I believe that the world is changing, you know, day in and day out so dramatically that it's hard for me to say no. Like I can, I can believe maybe we will have a, a woman president. Like it's so mm. easy for me to be more optimistic about our world now, just because we're in 2021 about to close it out. And who is to say, yeah, 2040, <laughs> you won't have a female president or you won't have, you know, <laughs> A, a gay president like you just never know like these things in the world like obama blew a lot of people right and yeah like it just blew people and i kind of wish i'm like man i wish i was like old enough to really kind of you know get the gist of how that was so impactful like sometimes i literally like i'm a big youtube person and sometimes I get caught up in these loopholes and I'll just go and go and go. Like HBO has some yep. really good stories same, as well. Same, same, same. Yep. <laughs> like HBO has some really good stories on Obama, YouTube, obviously. And sometimes I'll just watch and I'll just sit there and I'll just be like, damn, this is crazy. Because 2012, I was my freshman year in high school, right? So I ain't worried about what's going on in this world at all, 100%. And I'm like, damn, this is crazy. Like, I remember my grandma had all these Obama shirts, <laughs> uh, like the parades. Like, we used to have this MLK parade um, every year down the street from my grandma's house. And every MLK parade, you always see, just like kind of like this shirt, it would be like something about saying, like, I have a dream. And then you'll see Obama on one side. You'll see Martin Luther King on the other side. And like now all these shirts are coming back and it's because it's so vintage and people like love these shirts. And like I just get caught up in some of that stuff. And I'm like, this is crazy because those are things in this world that our kids are going to learn about. Just kind of like how we learned about all this stuff in the books. And, you know, you like, mm -hmm. oh, man, this and this and this. And like they're going to learn about the first, you know, black president ever. Like they're going to learn about that. And you're going to be able to tell them, yeah, I was alive when this happened. And it's, it's, it's kind of cool. You know what, man? Like, I love your optimism. I love it. <laughs> but unfortunately, it's not, it's not always reality. Because, like, I think in for me, in 2021, we've reached a stage yeah. where we can see something happen. And there can be a direct split in the middle about people's interpretation of it. Mm -hmm. Like, as is the case with Rittenhouse, as is the case with, uh, say, a police officer shooting somebody in the back. Some people say you should never have shot someone in the back. This person will say, well, why was the person running away and not obeying the police officer? That's yeah. where we're at. And when people talk about Obama, there's a group of us who feel very fondly about him, not necessarily for policy, but for what he stood for. And then there's another group of people who hated the fact that he was ever in power. And it's that yeah. sort of hate divisiveness, which means that, say, when his story will be told, his legacy will depend on who's telling it. And that is the danger because now, like, what is the truth? And the truth is it depends on who's telling you to you and where from. Because, mm -hmm. say, there's certain types of places that exist in the world where they don't even call it slavery anymore. They don't call it the past slavery. They call it, like, forced servitude and stuff like this. And say, oh, you know, this happened and that happened. Like, And there'll be tons of people who will hear that and play along with it. There are people, like... The, the concept, this is what blows my mind, really, the concept of racism. Like, if somebody says something that I take offense to, which I think is racist, and I say to them it's racist, most of the time they'll say, well, that wasn't racist. So they're telling me that they're not racist. So in yeah. their minds, that it's fine. Yeah. So if, so if that's what they think, then, like, how are we really making progress? I think this year, or the last 18 months or so, there have been more people who've been aware of what's actually been going on in the world. And as a consequence, they feel more comfortable to be able to speak up because there are more people like them around now who aren't necessarily the ones being abused and so on. People understand women's rights more, understand like LGBTQ plus rights more now, you know, minority situations and stuff like that. So they're speaking up more, but then still there's a ton of people like they couldn't care less. Bro. They could not care less. So when they're going to tell a story, like 
Right. There's nothing that, like with it, with right now, especially in America, with the two party system, it's like sworn enemies. If this person says tomorrow is Saturday, someone would say, "Why don't tell me what tomorrow is?" I take offense to that. You know, like this is this is where we're at. So, <laughs> so when it's like that, like you know, yeah. whichever side you're on would dictate the view that you have in terms of what you see, and that's the danger. Which is why I'm not as positive. And it wouldn't, you know, if they was to be like president again. I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't like a black Republican. That's why I could imagine seeing further down the line, but we'll see. Yeah, I don't see. I don't really. I'm not really big into political stuff. Um, like I'm super yeah. religious uh, to myself. Like mm-hmm. I don't like blast it on people. <laughs> like some people. Um, so mm-hmm. I keep everything kind of like just in like into myself, and like you know that's kind of why I don't get super intertwined with the social injustice stuff like obviously i feel because that's a reality that i live in like i always tell people mm-hmm. like it happened to me before like you know and i don't know if a lot of people know this but like it happened to me in utah right like you said like i was the guy like everyone you know blase, all the whole but like it happened to me my junior year um it was after our washington game and in the Pac-12, being on the West Coast, we always play all these night games. And our game was 8 o'clock at night. So it was already dark, right? And then the game doesn't get over until, like, you know, 1130, almost midnight. And I'm driving home because I live 20 minutes away from the uh, from the school just because I didn't like to be, you know, that close to the school and everything like that and to be close to that many people. Um, but I live 20 minutes away, so I would I drove back. Um, it's, it's late. It's real late. It's like, it's past midnight for sure. And I get like, I start seeing this car follow me and it's a police car. And obviously Utah is diverse, but it ain't like Mm. the most diverse place you ever been. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. Like if you go to certain places, like, like in school, I was, it was only so many black kids in the school. Right minus being playing a sport right like if mm-hmm. i seen somebody black i was like yeah you probably play some sport right mm-hmm. and if you didn't you're just like what the hell are you doing here <laughs> and a few of my classes if i wasn't in the class with another athlete i was probably the only black person in the class right and it's weird because i'm from miami where we have everybody everybody lives in miami mm-hmm. right like it doesn't matter where you're from everybody's here so I went to school, like in Miami, I went to school with, with Cubans, Dominicans, Puerto Ricans, like everybody. So like I know kind of how to move around like everybody, right? And it was like, that was normal for me. And then when I went to Utah, being like the only black kid in the class sometimes, it was kind of like, kind of like scary in a sense. Not like as in I was scared to be like they were going to say something to me, you know, whatever, but just like, just being that, like, you almost feel like you're just like a, you're outcast. Like you're just a sort thumb. Like you're just, like, mm. you're just there. Like everyone mm. see you a hundred percent. Right. And you know, all the stereotypes, Oh, athletes, uh, they love to cheat, <laughs> you know, and you start thinking, mm. oh, what are these people thinking? What are these people thinking about me? You know, the whole nine yards, I had dreads like I have now, you know, the whole, everything like that. But, Going back to my story, like I remember driving home and I see this police car get behind me. And as when you're when you're black, the first time you when you see a police car behind you, you're like, oh god damn. Like you're like, man, mm-hmm. what does he want? Right. <laughs> Cause like that's one of the things that I learned mm-hmm. when I was young. Like, if a police officer get behind you, either get off this street or go into the next lane <laughs> because he's probably trying to you know, write down your tag number, see who who uh, this car belongs to, you know, the whole, the, everything like that. And being from Miami, that was kind of mm-hmm. like uh, normal in a sense, because like where I grew up at, it wasn't a lot of mm-hmm. positivity going on. So like I always seen police and, you know, and I just kind of got used to, like I, like my first met my girlfriend, one of the things that she noticed was I was like super, aware of my surroundings and i'm like yeah i have to be <laughs> like i'm super aware of my surroundings like i need to know everybody at least see everybody that's in here with me right and like 
everywhere we go, like everywhere we've lived, we lived in Utah, uh, stayed in Cali for about six months when I was doing my draft process and now being in Buffalo, like I learned the streets. I learned these areas so fast and I kind of like spot out where police officers be hiding that when you're driving. Right. Like mm-hmm. I would know, all right, I'm about to come up to this spot and I'll look every single time. Like it doesn't matter if he hasn't been there for two months in a row. Like I always do. And I just feel like for a lot of black people, minorities, that's probably something that's super familiar for everybody. Like you just do that without even thinking about it. Like it just becomes second nature. And, you know, that's for one, that's just crazy that you have to do that because like you said, like a lot of people, like you said, like, um, oh, well, my life's good. Like, I don't worry about the police or I don't worry about this. Well, mm-hmm. exactly, because these things are not a reality for you, which is the reason why a lot of people don't speak up about things. Because if you don't see it happening every day, if you're not living it, if it's not your truth, if it's not your reality, you're not going to care about it, right? Like, you're going to have a very blind eye to mm-hmm. it. And, you know, it, it, it kind of makes sense in a sense. But I saw the police officer behind me and instantly I just turned down my music. And I'm just driving, and it's super dark because it's not a lot of street lights in Utah. And where I lived, I lived in Cottonwood Heights, mm-hmm. um, and it's a pretty, mm-hmm. you know, solid area. Um, and I remember, so I'm like, man, I'm going home. I turn, and he's still following me. And it's not that many cars on the street. It's like, you know, it's past midnight, so it's not that many people on the street. So I'm like, I know you're following me. <laughs> like I get it. And I lived in this development where I lived all the way in the back. So like I would, I turned in and I have to go down this little street and then have to make a left and go down this other street. So I'm like, if you're following me, you're doing all these exact things. Right. And in the back of my head, I'm like, bro, if he wanted something, he would have pulled me over by now. Right. Like if I did something out of the ordinary, Mm -hmm. I would have been pulled over by now. So I'm like, what is going on? And everything in your mind just starts racing. Right. Like he just starts racing. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, I don't know what's happening. So I get home, I park. And, you know, this is like one of the like this is like one of the scariest times of my life, because when I got home, we didn't leave our our porch light on. Right. So it's super dark when I get out of the car. And he stops his car. And the first thing I do is just like I just turn like just to look in that direction right you know like very quickly i just looked and i looked that way and he asks me do i live here not you know you know nothing like no other type of Mm. questions he's asking me do i live here you know what i mean and i'm like maybe he thought i was just trying to get away from him you know what i mean and maybe he thought if i parked here he'd just keep going but he's like yeah he asked me do i live here i was like yeah he's like Hmm, okay, we just don't see a lot of your kind around here. Those are the exact words. Mm, Lord of mercy, wow. 